So now we're going to get started on the advanced usage of array lists and how you would use them in loops. So just before we get into the loops, we're going to look at how to add to an array list. And what we're going to do is just add to it like it's just a normal variable. So to do that, we use the add function, which is an extension of inside the array list. So we specify the list dot add. And then we make sure that we're creating a new class object because that's the type that of the list that we're going to be accessing. So we can do that as many times as we need. So if we need like 20 or something, we can keep going. But as you can see, it's already getting pretty long and we haven't got that many. So instead of doing it this way, we're going to use a loop. So if I just get rid of this. So we can specify how many we want to make. If I wanted to make two, then I'd say num to make two. Now inside of the loop, I specify that I'm creating a new integer, which we'll use as a counter here. Now counter, see where we are. And I'm going to say, I want to run until I am finished with however many I want to make, which is specified up here, two. We, you want to usually set this up outside of the loop, just so it's obvious what you're actually comparing it against. So if I just did two here, I might be saying that I only wanted to make two or I might be trying to make as many as who knows however many is in the int list for example because in the int list there's two what if I'm trying to match it up to that who knows so instead of doing that I'll give it a meaningful name which is num to make I can change that to whatever I want so after that we specify after each loop what do we do we iterate in the counter which is I by adding one onto it. So for each of these loops, so for each of the number to make, I want to add a new class object to my list. And then I want to set up this class object so that it's boolean created, which you can see here, is set to true instead of false. So this is just a random boolean. You probably wouldn't do something like this, but this is just to show how to access the object. So I use the get method. So I'm getting whatever index I'm currently at. So this is i, and each time i is whatever index I'm currently at. So if I want to get i, I can then modify this object directly by using the dot, and then this is a variable, so I could use created here, so created here, or I could use a public void visible function. So I could, instead of doing created, I could do oh, list dot get i dot visible function and that compiles fine because it ex is it is existing and it does actually it is actually accessible so if i wanted to view what current counter i'm at i could print out the counter here using i because i is an integer okay so now what if i wanted to after this i decide oh a bit later down the track i want to actually change whatever the visible integer is how would i do that the fastest way well, the fastest way to do it is to access the object. If I want to change all of them, I need to access the objects as fast as possible without worrying about where I am. I don't need to know where I am. All I need to know is what object I'm currently accessing. To do that, we use a for each loop. So in this for each loop, we specify whatever type we're going to be accessing. So it's going to be a class object because that's what the list takes. And then we give a variable name that we're going to be representing it as this object. So we're going to say co, the class object, co, and of type, which is this uh, colon, and then it's from the co list. So through each of this list, each of the entries in this list, grab the class object. Okay, so I say co, which is going to be for each of the objects in the list, I want to change the visible integer to equal 10. So by doing this, every single item in that list will now have the visible integer of 10. Check this, we can then print out by going system out dot print line and we can go co dot visible integer. Okay, that'll print out visible integer. Alternately, if you have a GUI application, you can make it display on the screen when you're clicking a button or anything like that. What's important to Get your head around is how these lists can actually interact with these for loops. 
So bringing it back a bit, say I didn't want to make it num to make, what if I wanted to, I had a separate list and I wanted to make as many in that list as there were in, say, the list of integers I have. So instead of doing the num to make, I can directly access this list size by doing int list dot size, I believe. Yep, so now it'll create as many class objects as there are integers in this integer list. So I can use this for things like if I wanted to have an array of integers, which also had an array of strings. So say I had a list of names and I want to have a list of phone numbers as well. For every one of those names, I need a phone number. So for every time, for instance, say for every time I created a new person, I'd want to create a phone number as well. Okay. So to do that, I could use an, a loop that loops around, and for each one of those, I could add to the list. So it's important to understand that you can create relationships between lists that don't actually require you to have the same type in each list, right? So if I have a list of integers, I can then also have a list of strings that can be related to each other. Now, this is going a bit more in, more in detail, but that would be something that you might store inside an object. So if I had a object that was say I called this a person instead of a class, I could have inside that a, an a, not an array of lists of names or numbers, but I could have a phone number or a, uh, and, 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 sorry, a phone number and an address and a name, and I could store this object inside an array, and I could access it whenever I wanted. And that's it for this tutorial.